didn't realize how much I missed being a martial artist until I walked back into the dojang. Hey there, welcome. This is Whistlekick, a martial arts radio episode 336. Today, I'm joined by Mr. Sean Kinney. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm your host for this show. I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and I love martial arts. It's what I do. It's my life. It's my job. It's my passion. And I'm so blessed because I get to share all three of those things with you. If you want to check out the show, all the other episodes, we've got whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can find all of our projects, all of our products over at whistlekick.com. And we've even got quite a few of our products on Amazon. Yes, they have Prime shipping available. We know that a good number of martial artists start off as children. And we know that it's not uncommon for martial artists to take a break, to join as a child and then come back to martial arts later in life. And today's guest did just that. But as he came back in, it became a family affair and then a much bigger deal as he pursued his love and his family's love of martial arts in a way that very few have done. And rather spoil that surprise. I'll let it unfold as we talk. So here I am with Mr. Sean Kinney. Mr. Kinney, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hello, thank you very much. Very excited to be uh, on the line here chatting with you today. Hey, I'm excited to have you here. You know, good stuff. We, we were just having a quick chat about occupying the same state at one point. We'll get into some of that stuff as we go on. You know, you've listened to the show. Most likely, the listeners have listened to the show. Might have a few people who come in new each episode. Hello to any of them. But we start in a pretty logical place to start. We start usually at the beginning. So let's go to your beginning with the martial arts and tell us how you became a martial artist. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, I am a student of uh, Tang Sudo, and uh, I started my studies in the mid-90s out of a YMCA in the town that I lived in at the time in Middleborough, Massachusetts. They had a, um, a Tang Sudo school that was operated uh, through the Y, and uh, it was part of the uh, Burn Tang Sudo School which is uh, really, for the most part, I think now out in Western Mass and in New Hampshire, Vermont. Um, so there may be some schools in your, your current area of residence as well. Um, and they're still a thriving program. Um, uh, Master Burns is no longer with us, um, but uh, his schools are being operated very, very well. Uh, and I actually had the pleasure of being in a tournament and meeting his daughter uh, a year ago. Um, so it was about 20 some odd years after I began my my journey in martial arts, um, that I got to kind of be revisited by that. And, uh, so it was a very neat opportunity for me. Um, so I went through uh, my early ranks, um, as a GUP member, that's the Korean term for our colored belts, uh, members, uh, when I was in the, my, uh, tween and teen years. And then, uh, like, I think lots of families that get started, um, what uh, occurred was I went to high school, had an opportunity for, for high school sports that are training five, six days a week. And I shifted my focus from the martial arts to engaging in some of those high school activities. Um, and uh, then having left the, the realm of the martial arts for a while, it wasn't until I became a parent myself and I thought of all of the really outstanding characteristics and traits uh, that come from studying a martial art, being a martial artist. And I thought I really want to help to bestow those upon my own children. Um, so when my kids were old enough to begin a program, I began seeking out, uh, the, the good programs in the area. And I felt very, very lucky. There was a thriving, uh, excellent, uh, Tang Sudo program in the town next, uh, to where we were living. And therefore I was able to, uh, continue the journey with my children this time, but continuing the study of Tang Sudo, uh, anew. Mm. Nice. Nice. Now what's changed for you between being a youth martial artist and an adult martial artist when you when you compare the two when you look back and think of and i guess i'll leave it that broad what do you find as some of the differences for you uh how about flexibility okay <laughs> yeah i think i was a lot more limber when i was 12 than i am at 35 um no absolutely I, outstanding question and so many things are different and so many things are the same um i think one of the things that's the same that i found to be the same I found so 
um, so rewarding for me that was the same as the culture of the martial arts is one of uh, constant and continual personal improvement, uh, being surrounded by people that are looking to achieve their personal best, that are focused on putting positive things in their life, um, being heart healthy, being physically healthy, being able to um, to possess self-confidence and self-discipline and to have um, through that confidence, the ability to protect themselves and their family, the people that they care about. Um, so I, I love the functional fitness aspect of it, but all of the psychological components um, that I think are developed just as, as powerfully through the martial arts as the physical components are. Um, so those are things that I found to be the same. Um, and I'm thrilled for that. Um, I would say that I didn't realize how much I missed being a martial artist until I walked back into the dojang and the moment I walked back in and I met with, uh, master Gregory Mendez and had my first conversation with him, just seeing, seeing the heavy bag, seeing the ring set up. I thought, Oh my goodness, I, I didn't realize how much I enjoyed this and how much I missed it. So, um, that was a fun thing coming back as an adult, mm. uh, that I found. Nice. And then for differences, um, it's challenging to say, I think as a child, you look at things through a child's eye. And as an adult, you look at it through an adult's eye. So I would imagine my parents would say that they were very proud and happy to see that when I was studying martial arts, that it was bestowing upon me self-confidence, self-discipline, um, a connectedness to my community and an interest in trying to, to help to improve the community. And as a child, I just was loving going in and doing my punching and kicking. I was loving going in and feeling that I was part of a community. I was loving going in and, um, and being surrounded by people who were positive influences on me. But now as an adult, bringing my children into, into a dojang, I, I am purposefully really seeking out the opportunity for the personal development, the personal growth as much or more uh, then I'm seeking out that the opportunity for them to have the physical outlet, which is of course so important as well. I don't think there's a parent out there who brings their kid to martial arts and says, you know, I, I don't care if they don't become better people. I don't care if they learn how to be more respectful and have more self-confidence. I mean, maybe there's some weird outlier who <laughs> watched, you know, the original karate kid and, and didn't, get quite all the way through the movie, you know, and, right. and they, they crave a, a Cobra Kai education yeah. for their children. But most of them are, are, are going to sit on the sidelines and they're going to wish for that. They're going to hope for that. Maybe they'll ask a couple probing questions. But you as a martial artist now and a martial artist then have a bit more context, a bit more understanding how the lessons that we teach, that we learn in a martial arts environment impact a child. How have you prioritize that within either your training or your family or, or some other way to reinforce, to expand those lessons? Sure. Sure. Great question again. And uh, several avenues, I think, through which this is happening in my own life and in the, the school in which I am a member. Um, so just to clarify, so I am a student and an assistant teacher uh, and a staff member at uh, Mendy's Martial Arts in Taunton, Massachusetts, uh, which is part of the uh, Pyonhua Kunin Association of Tang Soo Do, uh, with uh, great Grand Master Stephen Volker uh, at the head of the association. And we are also part of an international organization of uh, Tang Soo Do schools called the uh, United States Goodwill Tang Soo Do um, Association. And that's really an association of associations that is focused on um, the betterment of the community, the betterment of the world through helping um, Tang Soo Do martial artists develop and become black belts. Um, so they use that term, um, improving the community one black belt at a time. And I love that. Um, so that said, really, there's a, a lot of emphasis within the school in which I'm a student uh, and I'm a staff member on uh, connectivity to the community and helping to improve the world around you um, through that personal responsibility that we all have uh, as members of the same community. Um, and that's seen through the uh, association memberships in which we carry. Uh, so that said, we do some great things within the school that I think are awesome. I don't know how many martial arts schools do this. It might be really prevalent. It might not be. Uh, but we have a monthly homework that all of our students are expected to take home and to participate in. And I love it as a parent. I know that it's a challenge as a parent when you're 
your children at home have their own homework from school and they have their own other extracurricular activities uh, to fit in. How do you fit in your martial arts homework? Um, but uh, what I have discovered them to be is just an outstanding chance for parent and child to communicate about some really valuable topics. So the homework that our students take home, uh, it'll be a monthly topic and there'll just be one little packet to take home for the month. And the theme for each month will be related to some aspect of martial arts, but usually the more psychological or, uh, you know, meta aspects of martial arts. So uh, one month might be respect. The next month may be indomitable spirit. Um, the ne next month after that may be courage. And it changes throughout the year. And that both allows us as a school to focus on a concept for a month, which is great, um, to uh, give that mat chat opportunity to be centered around a, a topic. But also it includes the parent and the young child in that conversation, that mat chat conversation by giving them that element to take home. So when I sit down with my five-year-old who's just starting kindergarten and they don't, uh, they don't read or write yet, I'm reading the lesson to them and engaging with my child on this topic of respect. And it's something that maybe you, you do discuss as a parent, but also maybe you don't. And maybe you, as a parent, you haven't found your entry point yet. So it kind of puts that entry point in the hands of the parent. Uh, it becomes great dinner table conversation or something like that. And then, um, uh, so it, it's a very interesting element. It's that, um, the social development, the social education that I think is is challenging to fit into the K-12 education with high stakes testing and with um, with all the elements, all those pieces of curriculum that you need to bestow upon your students. Uh, martial arts community is creating an opportunity to have that social development, that social education for kids. So that's something that we do at our school. And I hope that it's really prevalent and that listeners who are parents that are uh, catching this podcast are saying, oh, yeah, our school does something similar. Or does the same thing because I found it to be a really rewarding way to engage with my kids in a conversation that maybe I wouldn't have thought of otherwise, or maybe I wouldn't have known where the entry point was otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an element to it. Uh, and then absolutely, uh, like I said, I walked back into the dojang and uh, within a few months, I was a student myself. So not only did my, my son and my two daughters get started, but I almost immediately thereafter was started as well, uh, starting back up again as well. And um, so it, it is clear to, uh, I imagine, the, the listener that martial arts is something that I rediscovered my passion for, um, but it's something that I would encourage parents to consider. Is this something that you might be passionate about? Would you be passionate about having a greater level of health? Would you be passionate about joining your child on a journey to black belt in a way that you won't join them on a journey to, um, to, you know, to win the football Super Bowl or to dance in the dance recital. You can really participate in that journey to black belt with your child in a, a way that you can't do most of their their other activities in life. Uh, would you be interested in feeling like you're better able to protect yourself and to protect your family in your adult years? Um, so there's a, you know, I think a lot of reasons why parents sitting on the sideline maybe uh, get that itch to to suit up themselves and join us to put on a gi or a dobok and and uh, join the fray. And uh, I I would say that from my personal experience back in, I'm loving it. And in recent months at our school, we've had a bit of a swell of uh, parents joining the fray as well. We put a great promotion out over the summer, and uh, it's been awesome to see some great kids have their great parents join in uh and and participate with us and we're actually having our first belt test since that um that summer session that we ran coming up this coming weekend and we're going to have some parents testing for their very first color belt either alongside their children or the day or two after their children and just what a cool experience that is uh to share in something with your child like that yeah yeah super cool as you're talking about it i'm i'm thinking a lot about the various schools that I've trained at and that I, that I get to visit as part of my role with whistle kick and, you know, to respond to the, the, I guess the question that you put out there, I don't think the majority of schools do have anything that organized that facilitates those, those discussions. And it is something that I would like to see more of. And certainly I think some of that happens organically. You know, there's always opportunity to speak with a kid after they get, you know, an accidental pop pop in the eye or, you know, they don't do so well demonstrating something in front of the class or maybe post-competition, something doesn't go, you know, the way that they had hoped it would. But I, I think that there's, there's some value there. And it's something that I hope that the school owners, because we do have quite a few school owners and instructors listening, I hope they'll consider that. 
And then the other piece I wanted to respond to was on families training and training together. And I think that any school that does not offer some kind of, I'm going to call it a family class, an all ages class, even if it's only once a week is missing the boat because it, from what I see, it's the greatest entry point into keeping a group that will support each other. And that leads to retention. Oh, for sure. I absolutely agree with that statement uh, from that from that owner staff member standpoint. Uh, I think the more members of the family you have sharing in the journey, um, not only the more rich the journey will be, but also, uh, of course, uh, the investment in in the school, um, not necessarily the financial investment, of course, but the, the feeling invested as this is a part of your family life. Uh, goes through the roof. Um, and it's something that that I think is really beneficial. We do a parents as coaches class uh, periodically. It's not as often as once a week, um, but at least monthly. And uh, we get parents on the floor with kids and there's no no pressure. It's not a sign up opportunity. We're not trying to, um, of course, in, encourage the parents always to consider joining us because um, we love having more adults to train with for sure. But uh, it really is more designed to allow the child and the parent to turn the tables on each other a little bit. And now the kid that's been on the floor for six months or nine months or two years, that feels pretty confident in their skills. Now they're the ones holding the pad for the parent and they get to have that great moment where their skills are shining and their confidence is, is shining. Both, I think parents and kids always walk off the floor loving those moments. Mm, nice. So here we have a bit about you, a bit about your martial arts and how it integrates into your life and your family's lives. Let's talk about what you've seen along the way. I love telling stories. Everybody knows that I love telling stories and I love hearing stories even more. So why don't you share with us your favorite story from your time as a martial artist? All right. I'll, I'll endeavor to tell a story. It's so challenging to pick a, a moment when so many amazing things happen. Um, but I think some of the the elements of martial arts that I feel greatest about is in myself and my children and me as a parent watching my children through martial arts overcome adversity, um, develop abilities and skills they didn't possess before, and to demonstrate perseverance. And um, I'll say that very early uh, upon returning to studying martial arts myself and having my children start martial arts, um, so they were under a year of training under their belts. Uh, they were uh, encouraged by this, the school owner, the chief instructor, uh, Master Mendes, to participate in their first tournament. Now, I had participated in a tournament as a kid, and uh, I remember loving it, the one tournament that I participated in when I was a, when I was a student. And uh, we as a school uh, have a, a notion, a, a recommendation that we get all of our participants to, to participate in two tournaments a year as a minimum. They have multiple opportunities through the association and through other associations. And uh, so we thought, okay, well, we'll put the kids in the tournament. So we made sure they had everything they needed. They had their sparring gear. Uh, they had their bow staffs, et cetera, and they were ready to go. And we went to this tournament. I had three children entered in the tournament, and none of my children earned a medal in any of the divisions in which they entered. And I piled up at the end of the, the, at the end of the day into my minivan, three kids all sniffling because they had gone there with these high hopes of, of coming home with a gold or coming home with a medal or getting something. And three children, three divisions each, not a single medal to be, to be spoken of. And, and it, it was so hard for me as a parent I was so emo such an, an emotive experience for me as a parent to see them all face the the challenge of stepping to into the competition arena with their peers and to have them not meet with success. Um, the whether it was the the points scored in a uh, performed form or uh, whether they were beat on points in the in the sparring division, whatever it may be. So it was so hard for me as a parent to see them not be successful, and then it was so hard for them as kids to not get the medal because they showed up. And even I had a five-year-old, actually I had a four-year-old, a five-year-old and a eight-year-old, yes, in the division at the time. Uh, and not, not a single soul walked away with a medal because they showed up uh, in the whole tournament. And 
that was expected by me, but I feel that I underprepared my children for that experience because they're living in the, it's the end of the year, here's your medal for, for being on the team. And uh, it, so it was just, it was such a, a challenging ride home. And I was thinking to myself, where were the errors that I made as a parent in that I didn't maybe prepare them as well, both to perform and to compete and to be successful, but also I didn't prepare them for the psychology of this is a, this is a competitive event where there will be in a big division, a few people are going to merit an honor, an award, and, and the rest of the people are going to show up and do their best. And they're going to be enriched for the experience. They're going to be a better martial artist for the experience. They're going to forge relationships with other martial artists who are engaging in, um, in the experience with you, but you will not necessarily come home with a trophy to put on the shelf. So now that doesn't sound very much like my, my most valuable, my most memorable positive experience in martial arts. And the reason why is because it's only really the first element to what was or what has become my highlight moment. So I, I brought three novice uh, beginner students to a tournament very early in their martial arts career, maybe a little underprepared for competition, maybe a little underprepared for um, the psychology even of competing. And uh, it ended up being a negative experience for all, for dad for, and for all the kids. And what happened then was the kids went home and had a recommitment to trying to improve. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So you don't realize how good the competition could be until you get a chance to go and compete. And when you're in a division of eight-year-olds and there are some really outstanding eight-year-olds in there, it allows you to say, hey, I, I'm capable of doing that too. And it elevated my kids' uh, level of interest and level of excitement. So then fast forward, and so that was in March of, of probably 2017, fast forward to October of 2017, and um, I brought two of my uh, three children to another tournament. And in their second tournament, uh, both of my girls medaled in each division, uh, forms, weapons, and sparring in the division in which they competed. And uh, both of them earned at least one gold medal. Fast forward again another six months, and in, or eight months, June of 2018, uh, my son, uh, jumped into his uh, next tournament, the second tournament that he's participated in in his years of study. And he took silver in the sparring division of the tournament that he was in. And um, the perseverance of that, the, um, the commitment to continued personal growth um, was really, I think, what has become my highlight of this. And I don't think that competing in tournaments is by any means the be all and end all of martial arts. Um, it's a heck of a lot of fun if you can look at it the right way um, and a great way to, to forge relationships with martial, martial artists and to, um, and to maintain your level of fitness for sure. But um, for me, it was my kids learning some hard lessons about winning and losing at a young age, learning that if you want something, you work really hard for it. And that if you want something and you don't get it your first time out, doesn't mean you, you should give up. And uh, so that I would say is probably my highlight uh, experience is that my, my three children now have all continued to pursue martial arts and not looked at that negative experience as one of which they would back away from the sport, um, from the art, and also um, that they've continued to train, redoubled their efforts, and then been able to go to a tournament and take home a medal and really have the, the pride of earning said medal. Mm. It's a great story. And, you know, you touched on a lot of really important points in there about expectation and the ever controversial subject, although far less so in the martial arts community of participation awards. Yes. Plenty of other things like that. So thank you. It was a great story. I appreciate you sharing it. And that, for the most part, was a positive story. It was a story that had a a happy ending and, and really even the low point wasn't that low but life often has quite a few low points and i'd like for you to tell us now about one of those in your life and how you were able to use your martial arts in whatever way that means to work through it i, I mean really uh challenging question uh for me to answer 
I, I'm going to go back uh, to my childhood days of being a martial artist, uh, kind of to tap into this question. And uh, I'll preface that by saying something that I am so humbled with as as a martial artist now, as an adult, and uh, working at a martial arts school and working with different families who choose the martial arts for themselves or for their children as a way to achieve their personal goals and to get personal improvement. I am so, so humbled by the challenges in so many families' journey and uh, the, the road that they have to walk, uh, the challenges that they have, and the way in which they, they get up every day and they put their best foot forward every day and they do the best that they can for themselves or for their children, whichever it may be. Um, so I, I almost feel as if I, I have a story to tell and it's going to really pale in comparison to uh, the stories of many viewers. Um, so for that, I suppose I'm a very fortunate person um, as I think so many people have utilized the martial arts to help them overcome greater adversity. That said, uh, my story is uh, I started martial arts, I believe, when I was in the fifth grade. Uh, I need to think back all those many years now. And uh, I studied martial arts through my uh, upper elementary school and middle school years or junior high years at the time uh, and uh, or into early high school. And those were times when I was, uh, I was the kid that was picked last in gym class for everything. I was the, the kid that I was 12 years old and it was my last year in little league, but I still was on the minor league teams because I wasn't good enough to play on the major league teams. The 10 year olds were beating me at tryouts kind of thing. I had never found that sport, that athletic um, outlet that was for me. I had never found a lot of success um, in, in anything that would be competitive or athletic. Uh, I was uh, fine in the classroom. I was a decent student in the classroom. I didn't have that challenge, thank goodness. Um, but I really was challenged to find a foothold in any type of, uh, of physical or health benefit type of activity or sport. Um, maybe for that reason, I think I was challenged in. Um, forging good friendships. Uh, I didn't have um, a, a, a lot of great social connectivity where I was. Uh, like for many people, middle school was, was a miserable time for me. Uh, freshman year of high school was a, was a really miserable time for me. And I think that's probably par for the course for a lot of people. Um, it's, it's a difficult time of life. Uh, so, met, so much change psychologically and physiologically for people. Um, but I certainly was right there. And then in addition to that, I was the smallest kid uh, in, in my class. When I was a freshman in high school, I was the smallest kid in my school. Um, having that late birthday, but still being able to uh, meet the cutoff to get into school. Um, I was that, that student that graduated high school at 17 because I started you know, so early. Um, so when I was a kid, I was really, really small for my grade. And I was really small for the teens. And uh, and that poses lots of social challenges for kids who often define their role by by where they fit in, um, you know, on that athletic team, by where by what number they're being picked in the gym class. Uh, so for me, joining martial arts and having an opportunity to do this thing that was confidence building, that helps me to develop some some muscle mass, some control of my physicality, helping me to improve my dexterity. Um, fortunately, I, I would say that I was really never the victim of physical bullying. Um, so I never needed to use the self-defense uh, skills that I developed um, to protect myself. But what I did was I developed self-defense skills, which allowed me to feel more confident in the world around me when I was such a small guy. Um, so I would say that that was really the challenge that I had is I, I felt like both a, a social misfit and really didn't belong on any, any squad, any team when I was a kid and martial arts gave me a place to belong. And like I had said earlier in the interview, uh, the martial arts schools, the dojangs, the dojos, those are places where positive people are looking to do positive things. And uh, I got to be surrounded by, by people that were positive, by people that were searching personal improvement like me. Um, and then I also, I, I discovered that I had some aptitude that it was not only could I be, you know, in the studio, could I be training with the other kids? I actually discovered that, Hey, I, I have some skills. I can be successful here. Um, 
you know, I can, I can perform these maneuvers and, and I can do them well and kind of be, be receiving the positive reinforcement of the teachers in the room. And, uh, and that was a very cool, a very cool thing for me. And I think that it helped me to uh, approach that next phase of my life, those high school years of my life with a, a confidence, with a perseverance and a sense of, uh, of I can do this that I wouldn't have had otherwise. Hmm. Right on. Now let's pretend for a moment we have a time machine and you have the ability to train with anyone, anywhere in the world, anywhere in time. Who would you want to train with? It's so trite, but... I have to say Bruce Lee because he brought the notion of adults studying martial arts to the United States in a way where this is a way of life for adults to have physical fitness, um, personal growth, psychological happiness. And he built communities early, you know, very early in his, in his career, um, uh, of martial artists who uh, I think uh, I think I would have really loved to have been part of that and be part of a time when um, adults studying martial arts here in the United States was really kind of blossoming for the first time and we were seeing schools pop up all across the country uh, very shortly thereafter and see more and more styles of martial arts begin to flourish here as um, as the United States is, is that melting pot of different cultures and as um, as that flower blossoms. Uh, people from all over the world who are now residing here in the United States were bringing uh, to, to, to life here in the U.S. the martial arts, the traditional martial arts from their home countries. And now, you know, if you were to, to walk through a major city, you could probably find dozens of different styles of martial arts, some of which are newer, some of which are traditional, some of which are hybrids. And, uh, and I think a lot of that is rooted in the success that was founded by Bruce Lee bringing um, starting those martial arts schools uh, back in the day, and then obviously through promoting uh, the martial arts with his many movies as well. Uh, and he's an icon, so uh, that, you know, no, no better icon there. There, of course, is a great Tung Soo Do icon. Uh, so my close second place is Chuck Norris. Uh, so Chuck Norris is a is a black belt, I believe, is a master of Tung Soo Do, um, and uh, that would be amazing as well. But I went for the the earliest. Uh, uh, a uh, real key person. Uh, so there you go. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't, I don't think there's anything trite about naming Bruce Lee. I don't think that you can discuss martial arts and individuals who have had an impact, whether that be in the way people think about martial arts, excuse me, or in people participating in martial arts without talking about Bruce Lee. There's a reason he is the most celebrated martial artist of all time. 45 years after his death, he's still the one we all think about. So no, to me, there's nothing trite about that. Let's kind of flip that question on its head. Let's stay rooted in reality. When you consider the folks that you have trained with, who would you say has been the most influential on how you are now as a martial artist? Absolutely. Uh, so that's a significantly easier question. So thank you. I needed an easy Usually one. Usually is. Uh, after the last one. Yep, that's good. So this is that nice break. I can stop sweating now. Um, so uh, hands down, undoubtedly, um, Master uh, Greg Mendes of Mendes Tung Sudo uh, in Taunton. And he is an outstanding instructor. He is an even greater human being. and. Uh, being a part of his school, both as a student and getting to work on the staff with him, has been an extremely rejuvenating experience for me as an adult and as a father. Um, and uh, hands down, he is uh, just a, an absolutely amazing motivator and, uh, and, and passionate, passionate um, martial artist who cares so much about uh, the art form, about Tang Sudo, cares so much about helping his students to reach their personal best, and cares so much about um, helping people to learn the skills that they, they need to feel confident and safe uh, in, in a crazy, crazy world. 
Um, so, and then in addition to that, uh, Master Mendes for me has really taken on a, a mentor role um, as I now uh, work with him, have the pleasure of working with him at the school that uh, he's helping me not just hone my skills to be a better martial artist um, and to be a, a teacher of the martial arts, but really um, to, to have a positive outlook and positive view on the world around me and to see things from uh, the perspective of what can be done. And maybe uh, uh, I'm a bit of a glass half empty guy sometimes, uh, and he's very, very much the glass half full. And he helps to, to lift me up in that capacity and help me be a more positive person. Um, so uh, cannot say enough about that man or his program. Mm. You know, after three and a half years, there aren't a whole lot of answers that come up that are new. And, and someone choosing their current instructor as being tremendously influential on them that's not new. It's powerful. It's poignant. It's important, but it's not new. But what was new to me was your use of the word rejuvenating. And I suspect that that word wasn't chosen lightly. What do you, what do you mean? When you say that your opportunity to train with him, under him, to teach, and as someone who works in a school, why rejuvenating? Well, I would say that uh, life can be a grind um, for, all the, uh, for all the parents out there, for all the people working two jobs and three jobs and whatnot out there that are part of the viewership. Uh, but life can be a grind. Life can be really challenging, uh, difficult uh, decisions and um, uh, health challenges and financial challenges that are beyond our control can come at us in our adult life um, uh, just so frequently and, uh, and without warning. So I would say that uh, I was a, uh, a person who was overworking himself um, and uh, overcommitting himself and uh, searching for for something different, for a change in 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 how I do business, so that I could um, maybe bust out of a rut. Um, and uh, it's funny, my my wife, uh, who's amazing, who is the artist of our uh, the books that we publish, and uh, is uh, just an absolutely amazing wife and an amazing person um, and an extremely talented artist. Uh, she she has all of these little hobbies, little things that she gets excited about, or gets passionate about, um, whether it's just she's going to settle in on the end of a, of a stressful day with an adult coloring book and, and kind of color and color in and do shading and whatever and produce this, this really beautiful uh, coloring example. Um, I, I was someone who, at the end of the day, when I was done working, would look around and be like, what other work is there for me to do? Because I didn't have a hobby. I didn't have a passion. I didn't have something to that I could call my own that wasn't, that wasn't my career, that wasn't rooted in, in trying to create the best personal and financial future for myself and my family. And when the time came that I was able to get my children started in a martial arts program, and, uh, and I brought them in and I signed them up for their summer program uh, to get them started, and I was around the dojang again, and I started hearing the mat chat from, from Master Mendes and hearing the motivational things that he was saying and, and seeing the, the teens and the adults coming in for the class after when my children were finishing up, thinking to myself and saying to myself, maybe this is, not even maybe, saying this is where I need to, I need to be. And then in joining and in carving out some time for myself to do something that was a physical outlet that would challenge me in a positive way and that would have me be doing something dramatically different than what I do in my nine to five, you know, Monday to Friday and what I had been doing for the last decade and a half and maybe kind of getting lost in the woods a little bit as a parent, just trying to make sure you're doing the best you can for your family. Um, that's where it was rejuvenating is it allowed me to do something with my children that was also for myself that was for personal improvement and 
um, it, it paired me up with a mentor. Um, it paired me up with someone who has raised children, someone who has, you know, managed his business, um, you know, been self-employed like I am with the, with the book series and whatnot and, uh, and, and done so successfully and have some stories to tell some war stories and some, some victory stories and, um, to be able to motivate and, and really be a mentor to me. So that's, that's where the rejuvenation word comes from is that really taking the time, uh, really at, at my wife's encouragement, cause I don't think I ever would have signed up if she hadn't said, you, you gotta get in there. You seem so excited to get in there. Uh, uh, it has uh, given me an opportunity to, as an adult, in the in the life of wake up go to work go home cook dinner go to bed to do something that is meaningful that is powerful that is shared with my family and that is also really awesome for me Mm -hmm. love it now you have some things going on on your end that might take a little bit longer to talk about than we often leave space for so i'd like to transition to that now and let you talk to the audience talk to me as well i guess about what's happening with you. You've alluded to it a little bit as we've talked, but let's just, let's, let's jump in both feet. Tell us what you've got going on. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, thanks for giving me the floor. Um, so this endeavor, this journey into martial arts again, for me as an adult has been so powerful, um, uh, really has been, has been life changing. It's changed, um, both, my family life uh, in a very positive way. Um, it's given me this chance to share the journey to black belt with my children. Um, and it's given me something, as I was just saying, uh, it's giving me something to, uh, to hang my hat on as this is something that is positive, that is powerful, but it's also for me and it's for my growth and it's for my, uh, my betterment. And it allows me, I think, to be a better dad and to be a better employee and to uh, be a better husband because I'm doing something that is, that is really valuable, that is, is giving me that de-stressor and that rejuvenation, like we mentioned, to, to be a better person. Um, and in the whole process of, of walking this road with my kids, um, I, I took a, a lifetime hobby of mine, which was um, kind of journaling and then also uh, writing fiction. Um, something I've done since I was a kid, just kind of written. I have tens of thousands of words that no one will ever get to read. Ha ha. Um, because it's always been something that was for me. It was my, uh, personal outlet and, um, my, my, my wife's encouragement, just like she encouraged me to go ahead and sign up and, and start this journey again, uh, in the first place. Um, when she and a friend of ours who was a children's author kind of got, brought into the know, got wind that I had been uh, doing some, some writing on what my kids' experience has been, they had said, you need to develop this. Um, so uh, a friend of mine, Jessica Reno, who is a children's author um, in multiple series uh, going, she had said to me, you know, I, when I heard what you were doing, I looked up some comps and there's book series and book series out there for little girls that are studying, uh, studying dance there's not a lot out there for little boys and girls that study karate. This is really something that you should consider developing and um, having the, the, the perfect scenario of a wife who is both a classically trained artist and a graphical artist. Um, my wife and I sat down and said, well, let's, let's develop it. Let's invest in it. Let's see if anything comes of it. If there will, if we plant this garden, if anything will grow. And in, uh, really the winter of 2017, uh, my wife and I set out on a journey to take some of my stories and develop them into published children's books about, um, about kids doing martial arts. So that said, the Karate Kids collection uh, was born and uh, we have since published two stories with a third on the way, God willing, will be uh, published by the end of October. We're trying to release um, our biggest story yet. Uh, which is a 10 chapter chapter book really geared for the first and second grade reading level um, called the bully on the bus. And it's an anti-bullying story. And um, it's been in development for a long time with a lot of support vetting from uh, some friends of mine in the public education field and being vetted by uh, law enforcement officers and uh, 
mental health counselors and public school, elementary school teachers and administrators to make sure that the lessons that I'm, that I'm sharing therein are really, really well vetted and well crafted um, for, for the intended audience. Um, I am a, a high school teacher by trade, Monday to Friday, um, an amazing job, an amazing career field, and I'm very, very proud to do it. Uh, but I have not uh, worked at that age level significantly. So having these great, having DARE officers and people there to vet the work for me has been a huge resource, a huge uh, benefit to the story. Um, but yeah, that's the, that is the project, is the, the Karate Kids collection. And in that series, I have probably 15 or 16 children's stories uh, aging from books that would be read from a parent to a pre-K child uh, through books that would be read by second, third, fourth, and fifth graders, um, and everything in between when it comes to reading level and length and, and topic. Um, in, in the bag, in the back pocket, at least uh, have uh, first round editions written that probably require lots and lots and lots of editing on my part. Um, but the process of publishing and developing these stories has been an enormous uh, learning opportunity for myself. Um, an amazing challenge for my wife and I to pursue together and to overcome together, um, which has been just amazing. Uh, but also, it's been so eye-opening to see that um, the, the element of time that goes into the illustration and the, uh, the formatting and the layout of the stories is so significant, is so dramatic, um, far beyond what I ever would have imagined, having just, you know, been been sitting down as a kid with a pen and paper and then sitting down as an adult with, you know, Google Docs and, and a keyboard, um, really learning what the process is to take a dream to author a story and turn it into the reality of having a published work that's available for people to purchase and people to read, people to share and enjoy uh, with their children or as a family. Wow. Cool. And what are the goals for this? How big are you, you trying to make it? Um, that is a way more challenging question than it should be. Um, really, the goal for me was to enjoy the therapy of writing, um, which has always been something I've had in my back pocket uh, uh, as, uh, as an individual. And then when it became something that my wife and I decided that we would jump in and, and try to make this happen, uh, really, the goal was to produce three stories. And the third of those three stories is the one that we hope to release this year. Um, so uh, I, in the first three stories that we're getting to publication, uh, we have three different protagonists. Uh, they all have, I've changed my children's names uh, for the purpose of it, but each uh, of the stories, the protagonist is based on one of my children. So the real at its core goal of this was for me to commemorate my children in this published work so that uh, a story, an element of their experience with the martial arts could, could live on forever and, uh, and, and that they could live on forever uh, as, as the intended protagonist of the story. So uh, really, I, I wouldn't say we're meeting the goal when we publish the story in October, but I would say that our first milestone will be releasing this third and final story, uh, which is based upon uh, an experience that my oldest child had when she was in second grade, where she was experiencing some bullying on her school bus ride to school. And, um, it was just prior, actually, to her starting martial arts. So the, the details of the story have been created so as to, to, um, to share this lesson with the world about um, how to have children be consciously aware of, of how to uh, prevent themselves from being bullied, how to support targets of bullying, and what to do when faced with the challenge of bullying. Um, but it's, it's sharing a, a, an element of her, of her actual life. Uh, same thing, my, uh, the second story that we produced was uh, with my son as the protagonist, and it was about learning how to tie his shoes and learning how to tie the belt to his, to his gi. And the first story that we produced was about my youngest child, um, which is titled The Impossible Push-Up. And uh, that story is about my tiny, teeny tiny sprite of a daughter uh, who's six years old now, but when she started uh, martial arts, she was only four, and she was the, the littlest kid in the crew, and the challenges that she had when in a class with some bigger kids that had better control of their physicality for her to do some of those physical challenging things um, uh, that were difficult for her uh, being such a teeny tiny one. Um, and a uh, little sidebar here on this, uh, she's getting ready to uh, belt test this coming week uh, for her orange belt um, as she's on her road to black belt now as she's old enough as she's six. And um, 
we were in the studio the other day and after class, she wanted to just see what she could do. And she popped out 28 really impressive pushups and one, one superset um, with uh, having been committed to, to continual improvements and loving the martial arts and doing those physical things that make them healthy and strong. Uh, so she went from being the protagonist of the impossible pushup two years ago when she was four to being able to do 28 in the set, which uh, was just a challenge for a lot of adults. For uh, sure. Sure. But uh, yeah, so that's the uh, that's the first milestone for us is to get this third book out, and then all of my children will have their their cornerstone uh, piece written um, and, and out. And then, really, the books are about, in in my opinion, telling positive stories about how kids in martial arts encounter the same challenges that kids that are not in martial arts encounter, but how their skills and knowledge and confidence that are bred within a martial arts program give them the ability to overcome those challenges. So kind of hokey in some ways that, you know, it always comes down to a lesson from the master instructor that gives them that knowledge they need to know um, to be successful uh, in whatever the challenge may be. But really true in that in com committing yourself to personal improvement through the martial arts, you're going to learn invaluable life skills that regardless of your age, whether you're three or 30 or anything in between, it will help you to be a better person. Um, and that's where we're at. So I have lots of additional stories that I want to tell. Um, and, uh, and I look forward to, to telling and sharing the, the workload, uh, with my wife of, of building these books and getting them published. And, uh, if it's something that ever gains uh, mass market appeal, that'd be amazing. If it's something that has its little niche in the martial arts world and, and um, some families of, of young martial artists uh, enjoy sharing with their, their children. That's outstanding. And really, if it's something that is a project that my wife and I have, have endeavored upon, and really it never becomes more than telling stories that are powerful and meaningful to us that commemorate the life lessons that we have learned as parents and that our children have learned um, growing up through the martial arts, um, it, it really, it's 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 a very powerful and, and, and outstanding uh, personal endeavor for my family. Cool. Nice. Now, if people want to find what you've got going on, you know, website, social media, and all that, let them know. Great. Um, yeah, so you can find us. Uh, we're on Facebook at Karate Kids Collection. Uh, we're on Twitter also at Karate Kids Collection. And uh, then we have our website, www.karatekidscollection.com. Um, and you can find information there, uh, updated pretty regularly. And then also uh, the first two books that are available, that are published and available for purchase, um, you can find um, in some, some local area independent uh, uh, booksellers, uh, like Read More Books in Taunton, for example. Uh, they carry uh, our stories. But then uh, we're also available on Amazon.com uh, for prime eligible shipping. And uh, if people are interested in, in purchasing a copy and sharing it with a young martial artist uh, or sharing it with a school, I think one of the things that's been most exciting for me in this process has been that um, the school in which I, which I work, uh, they utilize the books. It's part of our welcome package uh, for new families. Uh, and we've used them in some summer camp programming uh, as, as resources. And we use them as prizes, giveaways, when we have raffles and things like that. Um, so it, it's found a niche therein. We've had the, uh, the support of the Pyon Hua Kunin Association um, to uh, sell the books at tournaments. So that's been really neat. Actually, uh, if you've uh, ever been to a tournament with a child, there's a lot of hurry up and wait. You, you get there, you perform bow in, and then everyone goes off and waits for their opportunity to have their age division called uh, or to have, be the division in which they're going to go compete, get called. So we have, uh, we've sold a lot of books at uh, the Pyon Hua Kunin tournaments. Uh, in the New England area and families and the kids sit down and they read the books and they share the books with their, uh, whoever brought them to the tournament um, while they're waiting on their, their time to compete, which has been great. Um, so that's been a wonderful thing. But also, um, I, I'd love to say more and more schools. I'll say uh, a couple other schools have, uh, have taken those books on and they're using them. They're either making them available in their studio for when kids are waiting in between classes and they have them on hand. So they have some martial arts material that's uh, age appropriate for children right there in the studio to be shared. Uh, some of them have used them as giveaways or have used them as prizes and things. Um, so that's really, really neat. I mean, we're a martial arts niche. Um, and what I really would love to see is that 
school owners look at the books, they see the value of the books, and they look at it as this reinforces those same character traits that we're trying to promote in our students. And we would love to, to share, this, share these books with our students by having them available in some capacity. So that has been a really cool thing, um, a really, really cool thing that I've been excited to see. And uh, as we move forward with the series, uh, we have some stories that are not necessarily tongue suit overlated. Um, so we have a, a jujitsu story and we have a kung fu story and we have a handful of other things and all shared with young protagonist characters that are going to um, uh, demonstrate how the skills that are taught in their style of martial arts help them to grow into being the kind of person that can find success in life. For sure. Good stuff. And I hope folks will check out these websites and, and you know, the website, the social media, and ultimately check out these books. You know, I, I want to throw this out as a reminder because it, it comes up once in a while. You know, no guest comes on the show with any kind of financial exchange. There's no commission that kicks out. We just try to bring folks on that have interesting stories. And once in a while, those folks with interesting stories have something interesting that they've done. And just part of the mission of Whistlekick is to give a platform to those people who are doing cool stuff in the martial arts, you know, just like what you're doing here. So I appreciate that. And, and I, I do hope folks will evaluate it. Of course, you know, we'll have the links over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. So you can go there and click through and not have to remember any of these things if you're driving along or on the treadmill or something like that. I appreciate your time here today. And I'd love for you to send us out the same way, but the best way that I can think of, the way we ask all of our guests to, what parting words would you share with the folks listening today? Jeremy, thank you so much. I can't, you know, thank you enough for the opportunity to um, contribute uh, through this podcast and to have the opportunity, the forum to speak with you. Um, I have been humbled again and again uh, since my return to the martial arts world um, not so many years ago with just the outstanding personalities that fill the martial arts world. Um, the more school owners that I meet through the opportunities of uh, writing and sharing these books um, and the more uh, families that I meet that engage and commit to martial arts, the more I just feel that this is a very, very broad, very, very diverse community. But some of the things that we have at our core is we're all seeking to be our absolute best. Um, and nearly every ethos from every um, style of traditional or new martial arts that I've discovered um, really are about helping people become not just their physical best, but their absolute best. And to take that absolute best and to share it with the community to help your community be the best it can be. And I very much get that sense from Whistlekick and what you're trying to do uh, personally, and professionally, and through Marshall Journal and through the podcast as well. Um, so given an opportunity to speak with you, really, it's, it's the pleasure is entirely mine. Um, and I'm so excited that I got the chance to, to have a voice for a few minutes with you. This has been amazing. And then for the listeners out there, just to thank you so much for your time today. Um, if there is a martial artist in your life, if there is a parent of a child in your life that you think would benefit from uh, from this podcast would benefit from the book series. Um, please feel free to just copy this URL and share it and, and let them know, share it on your social media. Um, we really, I think Whistlekick, I think uh, Marshall Journal, um, Mendy's Martial Arts, Pianhua Kunin, and uh, Karate Kids Collection, we're all about trying to promote the positive benefits of martial arts um, to the world around us so that this generation and future generations of martial artists can can really uh, continue to, to lift the community up. And that said, my journey has been an amazing one these past several years. I've seen my children grow and develop into strong, confident, um, and both uh, physically and psychologically prepared uh, young children. Uh, they're so successful in their lives. And I think that, that martial arts can claim a big portion of supporting them in that success. And I know for me as an adult, uh, coming back to it and getting fit through punching and kicking and being part of a team of adults that are trying to improve and trying to, to be their best has been an amazing journey for me. And I wish that same journey for all of you. And I hope you consider um, uh, joining the fray with whatever local martial arts school or style might be that you feel suits your, your, your interest and your goals and become part of this ever-growing community of martial artists. As you might imagine. 
I have a special place in my heart for anyone who loves martial arts so much that they create something out of it. Now, something that benefits children, that helps expand the reach of the martial arts, all the better. So thank you, Mr. Kinney, for doing what you've done, along with your wife, and for coming on the show today. Of course, you can find show notes with links to these great books and the other things that they've got going on over at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Dot com. You can find us on social media. We are at Whistlekick. Don't be afraid to sign up for the newsletter. Drop one, maybe two issues a month. Super low key. But just to keep you up on what's going on, especially when we roll out new products. If you want to email me, Jeremy at Whistlekick.com is the best way. I always love hearing from the listeners. That's all I've got. Hope you have a great day, great weekend, week, month, even year. Until next time, train hard. Smile and have a great day.